nowadays is like either so much harder or straight out impossible. There are a the few exceptions like Shadow Runner, which is you know amazing. Well, I wouldn't say it's impossible. There's a lot. I mean, um, Steam um, Workshop does quite a lot of that. You know, that, that they have given developer. I haven't looked at it. I don't know what the API is like. I don't know how it works or anything. But it looks like a lot of games are kind of trying to go down that route, or at least a lot of those types of games. You know, the ones that invest a lot into the world and the lore and the and the you know rather than just a single IP or a single story that's based in real life or something. If it's a fantasy realm, they tend to put a little bit more effort into the uh, the mod scene because, again, we all know there's a big mod scene when it comes to a game that grasps gamers, at least, anyway. Well, gosh, yeah. I mean, in the end, the modders are going to keep a game going without mm. the developers having to spend that much time trying to develop new content. They can seriously the focus... They can focus DLC money. <laughs> the money. Oh, yeah. See, that's one of the things we stress here on the show. If you're an independent developer, which is, I mean, the data mine is designed to be group therapy for the independent developer. But, you know, when it comes to developing games, if you're an independent developer, you have to still pay the light bill. You still have to pay the phone bill. And independent development does not guarantee you Angry Bird status does not guarantee you Flappy Bird popularity. It does not guarantee you yo <laughs> application that, money. You know. We all know that a lot of other issues come with that power or that that popularity. You know, it's not that. Look at what happened to Flappy Bird, for example. It's not a. It's not an easy thing to deal with. Not everyone can deal with that that fame, if that makes sense. If you did get there. At which point in time you have a, a few bits of reference, but nothing much. And it's literally left up to the imagination. Each one is different. So as your team starts to develop, you're going to probably find that you have certain artists, certain modelers, certain animators who require a certain level of freedom, whereas others want that much tighter restraint. Um, yeah, yeah. It, it, there's, I, I, I don't know, maybe Patrick, you can kind of shed some light on this. As an artist, do you feel the more in tune you get with your style, the more confident you get, the more freedom you actually want? Or is it the reverse? I actually don't care, really. Like, uh, I... <laughs> uh, like, got a good point. My, a good yeah, point. like, yeah, my, my, um, my approach was always is that I want to be as broad as possible, as general as possible, and as fitting to other people as possible. Like, it actually reflects in the way I play video games. Like, uh, be it in League of Legends or in Dota or whatever, I will always be that guy that I will, I will pick the all, all even in WoW. Like in WoW, I was mostly healer because no one wanted to be, no one wanted to be a healer. And my God, I want to finish that goddamn ride, so I will be this goddamn healer. Uh, so yeah, I like, I will do whatever. Like, greetings everyone. Thanks for watching this quick bite. If you like what you've seen, please click like, share, and subscribe. And of course, if you want to watch the full episode, click the bubbly heads that you see there at the top. Toodle pip.